I got to play games and look at videos through Xreal's newest pair of high-end display glasses, but I also got to talk to the CEO and founder about what's coming next. There's a whole future of smart glasses and AR glasses that are coming, but in the present, there are a bunch of glasses that are already out which do really useful things. One of them is the whole product line made by Xreal. These display glasses have been around for years, but Xreal's newest line, called the Xreal One, improves the quality of the display and the audio even more. The Xreal One has a 50 and 57 degree field of view in glasses that aren't that expensive. $500 or $600 for the two models with audio powered by Bose and a new ability to take these displays and fix them in space so that you could turn your head and allow yourself to see a much pieces of a much larger display without feeling like they're floating glued to your eyes. What Xreal is doing is one step of where AR glasses are heading. And I'm really curious to see whether it's a sign of what's to come. Xreal also has a plug-in camera for these glasses that's going to be compatible with AI. And I spoke to the CEO of Xreal to talk about what else is coming next for smart glasses and for Xreal. So I'm um, talking about Chi, who's the founder and CEO of Xreal Display Glasses that I've, that I've worn and tested and have been out there, work with uh, phones and game consoles. And I'm curious where the new glasses fit themselves in a landscape where we see AR glasses, yep. like, you know, there are prototypes of things that uh, Meta's doing with Orion, Snap's doing spectacles, and then, and then these at a lower price are also hitting a different landscape. Like, what, what, what do you see happening? Well, I, I, I see actually a big kind of trend. The VST is slowly going down, and you know, OSC is getting more and more popular. And the OSC is optical see through. I was going to ask what that is. Yeah, optical see through. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, and we always been, you know, working heavily and investing heavily on this kind of OSC classes. We believe this is the right form factor. You know, um, our ideal goal is, you know, um, how could we actually make this kind of glasses with like 80% of the VST experience? but only at 20% of their cost. In terms of you know, price point, the weight and everything, look at the full factor, right? This is something I believe I could wear on a daily basis. And you know, uh, given that kind of a direction, all we're trying to do is you know, how do we pick the, the display technology and how can we actually further optimize and tailor a kind of experience you know, for this? And one of the biggest kind of breakthrough we had is this X1 chip. You know, we, we think, you know, um, how can we act actually enable kind of universal 3 dot capability on virtually any kind of hosting devices? You know, there's no existing kind of solution for that. So we have to build something from scratch. So the X1 chip on this um, does, looks like some of the stuff that had been happening on some of your... Uh, hosting devices. Yeah, the separate devices, the Beam Pro and the yep. Beam. It can, it can fix things in space and allow the display to work a bit also like uh, I, I tried that space top AR laptop yep. where you could float displays and I tried curving a monitor and this and you could move around and see different parts of the display and that works with any device that works with like a iPhone or a Mac or a Steam Deck or whatever yep do you, do you see more uh, software becoming like a, acknowledging this capability or it does it not even matter in terms of you know what where where you're positioning yourself as kind of a like an AR plug-in display. First of all, you want to make this like a very dependent kind of accessory that can easily plug into anything. But yeah. if you really want to take this to the next level, yes, I think you know we can easily work with some of third-party like laptop companies mm -hmm. to enable maybe not an ultra wide screen but three separate different screens there. Mm -hmm. And slowly, slowly you can be able to project some of the holograms, not just model windows. And those kind of support is something we require from the third parties. Well, I think it's also interesting that they play in trying these out that they have um, their own like TV settings built in, you know, That's that right. you can do. There's a lot more onboard customization and it feels like it's bridging the gap between like the way I see it now, smart glasses have this, you know, people see a future with AR glasses, but in the present, the glasses are doing particular things like, oh, they're a good camera or they're headphones or in this case, they're, they're your display. And these seem to be leaning a lot into we're going to become more of that for, for people. Absolutely. I think, you know, for productivity, for gaming, this is their go-to choices. Yeah. I'm really curious about the camera. Yeah. You know, the, the, the camera, which I didn't get to, uh, you know, I know it was coming and I got to see it on the glasses, bridges into that um, AI glasses territory you're starting to see with like Meta and its glasses. Where, where do you see that going with these? I think, you know, uh, AI is going to be a big kind of complement to AR glasses going forward. It's going to make AR glasses more efficient in terms of interface. 
And on the other hand, I think, you know, if you look at like five to 10 years, probably AR glasses is the best platform for AI to take off because this is probably the, the host for you to see the world you're seeing and also know your recent feedback. So those kind of personalized data is going to help you personalize AI a lot more efficient and a lot more powerful as well. I mean, do you see that happening almost agnostically of platforms or, you know, like you, it's, it, it's an interesting position because it's kind of like build it and they will come. And there's a part that you want to wait for like ecosystems to arrive and then you build the hardware. And I think it's very interesting. The next real approach is like you just kind of make stuff that works and, um, and, you know, everybody's waiting for these advanced AR glasses and phone ecosystems, but that's, you know, that's still a long road. Yeah. But I, you know, you know, being in this industry, this is a hard work. You know, uh, it takes time, but, you know, we're really excited about what's going to happen in the next, you know, couple of years. I think, you know, we'll finally see a pivoting point where this market can, you know, really explode. And I see from technology side, you know, a lot of stuff are coming together. Maybe. For a form factor like this and even smaller. Do you think, uh, I noticed on the, on the pro models, I mean, they're getting more compact. Like the, you know, the oh, so lenses here are getting flatter. It's starting to look a little more like regular glasses. They're yep. still different, you know. Uh, do, do you think, how, how far away do you think it'll be until you could bridge that gap? Obviously, it's still being tethered too, but right. I mean, do you, do you see some of those being overcome or do you imagine, uh, you know, you'll kind of just cross those bridges as you come to them? Or? Well, it depends on, you know, what's your, uh, what's your end solution for, right? If you want to replace glasses you're wearing today, we're probably seeing five to 10 years. Hmm. But, you know, I think for now, if you really want to have like a sunglasses type of devices, you carry this with you all the time, and from time to time you want to plug that you want to take this on and then you know just enjoy this pierced. I think this one is probably pretty good. Yeah. Would you ever explore other types of accessories? Because you know I, I you know see Matt has got the wristband, and I'm really curious how much further, especially with the ultras that are out there, um, there's possibility of doing you know six off or, or full motion AR, and I'm. I'm curious about how far that part might not. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So the goal is not, you know, coming up with different type of interaction tools. It is coming up with a system where you feel like this is more intuitive and also yet efficient. Well, it, it also occurs to me trying out the the um, the demonstration of the current display on the yeah. on the laptop, and I've been thinking about AR. And it, part of me thinks, as much as there's like a future tech that you want to throw at people. Is it also about getting people used to just the idea of using something like this and then building from it? Because I kind of see that here where it's like, you know, enough people start using it as a display, doing things like that. Then you start adding more exactly. and that becomes the definition of what AR is. That's how the smartphone, even the iPhone gets started. Remember? Right. Yeah. So we actually wanted this to be a product that people can use on a daily basis. And then they will actually want to add more stuff and there will be more developers following as well. And also, I guess we finished thinking about your your X1 chip, which is like a, a new custom chip that's on these, yep. that is the beginning of some sort of a footprint there for how these can function on their own, anchoring things in space. Where do you see things going along that road? Well, I, I think, you know, it is a very important and pivoting point. And going forward, there are going to be more and more kind of computation outflow to the glasses. Hmm. And, you know, right now we have all the three off of winning here and maybe later six off hand gesture and maybe even some of the AI capability will happen here and this you know eventually you realize you can actually cut off this wire and this is going to become all you want devices at some point. So this is like the beginning of that yeah the, the beginning steps because it does feel like there's more living on these glasses now yeah than before even though they're also working as displays. Yeah and that's why you know compared to all the Air series yeah we believe we want to call this actual one. I think right. this is the, the actual step one for consumer AR industry. Gee, it's great talking to you. And uh, yeah, it's obviously curious about what comes next. There's Absolutely. a lot of stuff happening in this space. Yep. Uh, and uh, if you have more questions, you can leave them below. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching.